When a server starts to run out of storage space, one of the things we'll frequently try to do is add additional disks to the server. Physically, it's a fairly straightforward process, right? We, If it's a uh, desktop server or something like that that doesn't have hot swappable or hot pluggable drives, we shut it down, we open the case, we add the physical drives, we turn it back on. Um, it's even easier if it's a rack mount server or something that does have hot pluggable drives or hot swappable drives, and we just add them in. Once we get them added physically into the device, then we need to uh, configure the uh, disk drives. So that's what we're going to talk about now. In my virtual machine, I've added a couple of additional disk drives. So I want to configure them now for use with my server. So I'm going to search for disk management. And up comes create and format hard disk partition. So that's fine. So I open this up, and this gives me two additional disks now that I've added in. <clears throat> so unknown disk types. So I can right click and bring these disks online. When I do, it says that they're not initialized. So I can right click and initialize the disk. And that gives me the option to initialize both of them. And I can set them up either using the GUID partition table or the MBR master boot record. For an older devices, MBR makes sense. Um, GPT is not recognized. You'll see the note here is not recognized by previous versions of Windows. So if I'm not planning on moving it to an older version of Windows, that's fine. I just leave it as GPT. I'm going to hit OK. And that brings my two disks online. Now, I still can't use them. They're not allocated for anything. But now my disks are online. They are basic disks. We have two types. We have basic and dynamic disks. These are basic disks that uh, we need to create a volume. So I can right click and I've got several different options here. A new simple volume is basically just a regular volume. There's nothing fancy to it. And that's the only thing that can really run on a basic disk. A spanned volume can run across multiple disks. And what it does when we write data is we'll fill up our first disk with data and then our span volume can run across multiple disks. So after it completes the first one, then it starts writing data across the second one. Now, span volumes are kind of cool in that they can be used with disks of different sizes, even partitions. So if I have you know, part of this partitioned, then I could span across the rest of this and then this entire drive. Or if I've got several disks and I have just little pieces off of each one that are not partitioned, I can roll all those up into a spanned volume. So that's kind of cool. The one drawback of a spanned volume is if a, say, if a single disk in the volume set fails, we lose everything on the entire volume. So that's a spanned volume. A striped volume is similar but instead of writing data across disk one and then across disk two, it'll write data this way. So it won't fill up the entire disk. It'll write data across disk one and two simultaneously. So what that does is that gives us greater speed. So a span volume, I get no, uh, no improvement in performance because basically we fill up disk one, then we go into disk two. So again, no improvement in performance. A striped volume... This right here it takes at least two drives, and it writes across both of them simultaneously, and it reads from both of them simultaneously. So if I need higher performance, a striped volume makes sense. Now, the drawback of a striped volume is if a single drive in the striped uh, volume set fails, then we lose everything. So another thing to be aware of, so these are both 127 gig. Uh, drives, right? If I create a simple volume, I can create 127 gig here and 127 gig here. If I create a spanned volume, then it rolls both of them together and I get, what, 354 gigabytes. Stripe volume is going to do the same thing. It's going to give me 354 gigabytes, but it does give me that performance in improvement. The difference between, other than performance, between a spanned volume and a striped volume a striped volume, I can only use space on drives that are equal size. So if I had 100 gigabytes here and 200 gigabytes here and I tried to create a striped volume, I could only use 100 gigabytes on this drive and it would give me a 200 gigabyte uh, striped volume. My extra 100 gigabyte here would be unallocated. A mirrored volume will write data across both of them, but what it does is instead of writing 
part one of data here, part two here. What it does is it mirrors exactly. So everything that is written here, the exact same information is written here. And that actually gives me fault tolerance because now if a single drive fails, I still have all the data on the other drive. So that's the first of my options with fault or for fault tolerance. Now, you can put the operating system on a mirrored volume. You cannot put an operating system on a spanned or striped volume. Honestly, you don't want to put the operating system on a mirrored volume anyway. If you want that, then your better option is to get a RAID controller and do it in hardware rather than in the operating system. Now, you'll notice the RAID 5 volume is grayed out. That's because RAID 5 takes at least three disks. And the way it works is it writes data like a striped volume, so across disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, back to disk 1, then 2, then 3. So it gives you that performance boost. But the other thing it does is it writes parity information. So if a single drive fails, you can still access the data, still read and write the data. Your performance will slow down a little bit. It will have to reassemble what was supposed to be on the missing disk in memory. But it does give you fault tolerance for loss of a single drive. Okay, and that's RAID 5. Now, in this case, I've brought my disks online. I've made them basic disks, which when they come online, that's what they do. I initialize them as basic disks. The only thing that can exist on a basic disk is going to be a new simple volume. Now, I can right-click and convert to dynamic disk. I don't have to. Let's say I want to go ahead and create a mirrored volume, and I want to do it off this one. So I'm going to create a mirrored volume. And I want to add both disks. So we're using 127 gig off disk one and 127 gig off disk two. Notice my available space after we're done is 127 gig. Interestingly enough, if I did this as a striped volume, kind of like we talked about, and I add my second disk, it didn't update the amount of space available to me. That's okay. Um, I don't want it as striped, even though it would give me a performance boost. Technically, it actually won't, but if I was on physical disks, it would. I want to go ahead and create a mirrored volume, and I'm going to add this, and then I'm going to click Next. We're going to assign it a drive letter. E is going to be fine. I can also mount it to an NTFS folder, or I can choose not to assign a drive letter or path right now. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and forward it as NTFS. I'm going to change my volume label to data files, and I'm going to perform a quick format. I don't want to enable file and folder compression. So I'll click Next and Finish. Now, I said that this can exist on a basic disk. It has to be a dynamic disk, but we didn't bother updating. That's because here it says this operation will automatically convert for you. So I'm going to click Yes, and notice it switches both of them to dynamic disks. And then it sets them as a mirrored volume. And down here, here you'll see the partition is red. Here we notice the key. Mirrored is red. Blue is a primary partition. Black is an allocated space. Okay. And it's finished my format. And so now I have an E drive that is a mirrored volume set. So I can open up my file explorer and go to this PC, and now I have C drive, and then D drive, which is my CD, and then I've got my E drive, 126 gigabytes, and this is now fully operational. So that's really all you gotta do when you go to add drives into system, you add them in physically, you go into the disk manager, and remember when you do a search for disk management, it comes up with a create and format hard disk partitions. Disk management notices the actual name of the tool. But once you pull it up, then um, you can go ahead and create your additional partitions or work with them or whatever. Now, this is also the place where we will right-click and remove mirror, break mirror, change things. We can format from here. We can delete volumes. This disk management tool is where we are going to work with our disks. Now, this is standard disks. We can also do storage spaces, although I see that used more often with clients, although it is supported on servers as well. Okay, there we go. Adding disks to a Windows server.